Hey, hey. All right. I follow some, I guess they're Reddit groups. Uh, one is called Singularity, and there's, uh, it's, it's an old post and thread, but, you know, earlier in the year, they have their annual predictions. So they're, they're calling for people's predictions on when uh, artificial general intelligence will be achieved, when artificial super intelligence will be achieved, and when the singularity will happen. And, uh, and various people on that subreddit, you know, they're offering things like 2027 for artificial general intelligence, 2032 for artificial super intelligence. And um, that all seems wildly optimistic to me. And there's a long history in AI of people being, you know, wildly optimistic in terms of what they think they can achieve in a short time. In 1956, uh, among other people, Marvin Minsky was one of the, um, you know, the movers and shakers behind this artificial intelligence conference that was going to take place in Dartmouth. And here's what they hope to achieve. We propose that a two-month, ten-man study of artificial intelligence can be carried out during the summer of 1956 at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. The study is to proceed on the basis of the conjecture that every aspect of learning, or any other feature of intelligence, can, in principle, be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. An attempt will be made to find how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. We think that a significant advance can be made in one or more of these problems if a carefully selected group of scientists work together on it for a summer. <laughs> this is in 1956, over half a century ago, and a lot of these problems are still unsolved. Now, I have to say, I have been paying attention to this kind of stuff for decades, and I'm really impressed at, you know, voice recognition technology now, and uh, text to speech, and vice versa. I mean, the voice stuff, it seems, has really been cracked. What hasn't been cracked is this, you know, forming abstract concepts, which is to say, understanding things, applying concepts in novel ways, to the extent that AI of today does this, it's doing it in a very, very different way than we humans do, so much so that I, I am in full sympathy and agreement with the people who say, you know, it makes no sense to call the stuff we call artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. It's not intelligence. It doesn't understand anything. It doesn't know anything. Nothing makes sense to it. It is just, you know, these heuristic, statistical tricks which manage to take in input and give us output which resonates with our interests. That's really what artificial intelligence is. Or, you know, maybe that's one way to dismiss talk of AI. Uh, talking about artificial intelligence, I, I just have to say, can't stress this enough, it is such a slippery, ill-defined concept, it's really hard to make precise statements about it. But at the same time, you know, every university in the nation has got a computer science program with classes in artificial intelligence. They teach something in those classes. What they teach in those classes, by definition, is artificial intelligence. That's what the word or the phrase refers to. But it is slippery. I think it was um, Ray Kurzweil who said that artificial intelligence is just all the stuff that computers can't do yet. And as soon as a computer can do it, it's not... It, it doesn't count as artificial intelligence anymore because artificial intelligence is always this unrealized future, you know, objective, this future state of affairs, which is just by definition, it hasn't happened yet. Nick Bostrom, author of uh, Super Intelligence, put it as follows. A lot of cutting edge AI has filtered into general applications, often without being called AI, because once something becomes useful enough and common enough, it's not labeled AI anymore. So... Acknowledging the slipperiness of the concept. I still think it makes sense to say that we interact with artificial intelligence all day, every day. Most of us do. Those of us who carry smartphones or, you know, who have the, uh, the speaking speakers, <laughs> the listening speakers in our homes, the voice activated information assistants. But there are also all kinds of, you know, by this point, very routine, um, technological tricks like search algorithms, which do work and, 
you know, bring results that we want that, you know, don't really, they're, they're not considered artificial intelligence. They shouldn't be, but they're still powerful tools. And so what I'm working around to here is the idea of an artificial intelligence winter or an AI winter. This is a period where overblown prognostications about, you know, the near term brilliance of AI, it, you know, people like Marvin Minsky, he's past now, but, you know, throughout his career, he was saying, oh, yeah, AGI, 10 years away, we're nearly there. And in fact, Ted Kaczynski, aka Freedom Club, quoted Marvin Minsky in his manifesto, Industrial Society and Its Future, and pointed to the predictions of Marvin Minsky, which he takes at face value as reason why anti-technology activists have to act now and they have to use violence because we're so close to technology completely robbing humans of all their agency that, you know, there's this is our last chance. I don't want to say that, you know, the actions of the Unabomber were Marvin Minsky's fault, but Marvin Minsky was definitely an influence on the worldview of Theodore Kaczynski. So an AI winter is when these overblown claims like the ones that, you know, Minsky and other people make about, you know, where the technology, what powers the technology will unlock in the near term. When these promises go unfulfilled for a long period, funding for research into artificial intelligence dries up, it dries up at the corporate level. It dries up at, you know, in the, the military arena and it dries up in, on college campuses and people are just not interested. They're not interested in research. You know, they're not interested in funding the research that's going to lead to the next breakthrough. But even in long periods without significant breakthroughs, you know, we have two phases. There's, you know, a breakthrough phase and then an implementation phase. And implementation can get more complex. It can grow more powerful. You know, the tools and the, the processes that it allows, you know, some new discovery, which is being elaborated on, elaborated on, elaborated on, even though, you know, it's, it's kind of old news. The discovery itself is old news. The implementation can yield improvements in real world products and services and events, you know, for many years. And so I think I started to mention Reddit and how I follow the, the singularitarians on Reddit. I don't comment there. But there is another group that I was reading where, you know, they say, oh, an AI winter is nearly on us. You know, we have hit the wall in terms of how far we can take the, uh, you know, the deep learning methodology. And really, it's all just about data collection from here to train up algorithms. Because, you know, all the paths to genuine breakthroughs are, they, they seemingly go nowhere. And I think, the two views, the singularitarian view and the AI winter is upon us view, I think they're both probably way too extreme. Uh, the, you know, the actual truth or the way things will proceed is definitely between those two poles, but uh, maybe closer to the AI winter folks than the singularity folks. I, you know, it's, it's always safe to bet against the singularity because it hasn't happened yet. Kind of like AI, you know, kind of like artificial general intelligence. Uh, by definition, it hasn't happened yet. So what's the point? What does this relate to? Well, it kind of relates to the candidacy of Andrew Yang and in that uh, I do think that he's too early with his message about, you know, the effects of uh, automation on jobs. I'm not saying that it isn't happening, but I'm saying it's too early for most people to look around and see it happening, whereas some at some point in the future, they will be able to see it happening. But I think he's really, you know, staking out for himself a a you know, a claim on that topic. So then it, when it becomes really relevant, he will be the figure who has established name recognition, face recognition, voice recognition, and credibility on the topic. But I think it is important not to oversell, you know, what AI is likely to be able to do in the future that it doesn't do right now. I think it is more important to think about what it's already doing and what the consequences will be of just continuing to iterate on that, like facial recognition and optical character recognition used to track individuals as they move, you know, throughout their day, throughout their lives, throughout their communities, you know, using AI as a component in massive surveillance and sifting through, you know, data, security camera data and, and other types of, you know, location and movement data. 
just continuing to roll out and refine technologies that are already, you know, in use, I think that's going to have enormous effects. But I don't think that it's going to replace the need for, for humans in the workforce anytime soon. Uh, more of X paradox. I've mentioned this before. This is the paradox that, you know, machines can do symbol manipulation and, and calculation that no human can do. And they can do it from our perspective almost instantly. They are superhuman in certain cognitive abilities or symbol manipulation abilities. But for a machine to just walk down a flight of stairs and open a door and step outside, maybe reach down and pick up a newspaper or something, that is really, really difficult. So I think that for a very long time, humans will be doing that sort of work in the world, that it will be a long time before a robot is, you know, a human-shaped robot is competent enough to walk out into the real world and perform any manual labor job that is in any way comparable to what a human can do. You know, what a human gets paid 10 bucks an hour to do. You know, it'll be a long time before robots can do that, and it will be an even longer time before it is economically viable to replace a human in such a job with a robot. You know, examples like landscaping. Um, I think robots will be used a lot in construction in the near future, but even so, job sites are messy. I mean, you can have robots building modular buildings in a facility someplace and then, you know, shipping them out and assembling on site, it'll probably be humans assembling the pieces on site. It is mostly humans out there in the world manipulating things. I think that humans will soon, as in the uh, the novel Mana by Marshall Brain, soon have, you know, a lot closer monitoring and scrutiny by algorithms which are acting as management and will who will be looking to, you know, maybe catch mistakes or... Um, motivate workers, you know, to keep up the pace. I don't see robots making humans irrelevant in a huge swath of the uh, the job market. It's just that automation, when combined with policy, you know, which is meant to discipline labor, keep wages low, keep people from organizing. I mean, it's a piece. It is a piece of the class warfare that takes place, you know, day in and day out in this country. But it's not the whole story. And while it's, you know, I don't blame Andrew Yang for presenting it as a much bigger part of the story than it really is. I mean, that's just, you know, that is the position that he has staked out. That is the, the subject matter and the territory that he is laying claim to. And God bless him. I think he's, you know, a great person to have stationed in that particular ideological patch. But uh, it's it's not as relevant now as it will be in coming elections. And I'm thinking maybe even four years from now, uh, it still might be a little early for that message. We'll see. All right, that is all for this video. Uh, yesterday, I did make a video. I shot it. I edited it. I uploaded it. So, you know, my uh, my New Year's resolution is, it has been observed, but I got up this morning and discovered that the uh, upload failed, and I had already deleted the original footage, so I couldn't output a new version of it and try again. So it goes. It was brilliant, let me tell you. But uh, it, was, it remains in the Akashic Record, and we will all review it together at the end of time. All right. Talk to you tomorrow.